Good morning, happy Saturday. So today I promised that we would talk about labels, yarn labels. So just like when you go to the store to find some knitting needles and there's a huge wall of all different kinds of needles, same thing happens even to a greater degree <laughs> is the yarn. So many different kinds of yarn and we talked about yarn a little bit earlier this week. Um, and But this time we're going to focus on the yarn label and how to read a yarn label so that you know uh, what kind of needles you'll need for that yarn. So labels are also not standard. Um, different labels look differently. I don't know if you can see this very well, but you can see that one is different than, say, this one. Okay? So when you're looking at a label, sometimes it takes a little bit of searching to find exactly what information you're looking for. And when I look at a, a yarn, when I'm searching for yarn, I usually, the first thing I look for is um, what needle size it's gonna take, because that gives me a clue as to um, how big the yarn is, you know, how, how thick the yarn is, and how long it will take me to knit it. If I'm knitting something with a really thin yarn like this, it's obviously going to take me a lot longer than, than if I'm knitting with a thicker yarn like this. Um, okay, so here is an example of a label. This one is um, really easy to read because all the information that I need is right where I need it. Right in one spot. You can see all this information. Okay, so this right here, this little ball that has a little, I think that's a five. Yep, it's a little five right there. That gives me a clue as to the thickness of the yarn. Five, I believe, is considered bulky, bulky yarn. And then if we look over here, that little hook is for a crochet hook, and these two are for knitting needles. And the numbers along the sides tell us how many stitches down here and how many rows over here that we're gonna need um, if we use this size needle Let's see if I can read it. That says 10.5, and then it has a slash and then 6.5 millimeters. The 10.5 is usually a US measurement for a needle, so 10.5 US needle. So if I use a 10.5 US needle, I probably will get somewhere around, this says 13 stitches and 18 rows for a four inch by four inch square. And this right here is basically your gauge. Now, that doesn't mean that everyone will always get four inches square if they knit 13 stitches and what was it, 18 rows using a 10.5 needle in this yarn. But most will. Um, the difference is your tension. If you're holding your yarn against your needles really, really tight, then your tension is gonna be tighter and you'll end up with more stitches for a four inch square. If, you, if your tension is really loose and you hold your, your, your yarn really loosely against your needle, then you'll end up with fewer stitches for every four inches. And that, that gauge is actually a really important um, thing to look at and to know. You can see it <laughs> glare from my light. Um, that gauge is an important thing to know, especially if you are doing a pattern that is like a sweater or um, maybe uh, gloves, socks, anything that is fitted and it needs to be a certain length and a certain width um, for the thing that you are making. If it's a scarf or if it's a blanket or a shawl, those things not, aren't quite as important because um, the the size of it doesn't matter quite as much. But when you're making something like a sweater where you have to have certain lengths and certain widths for certain sizes, you definitely need to know that gauge. All right, so here's another little interesting information on here. This is um, what this yarn is made of, all right? So the yarn, and this one, it's, the content is 50% acrylic, and it's got 28% nylon, and then 22% wool. Okay, that gives you an idea of what this, what this yarn is made up of. Um, and we kind of talked about uh, yarns and what they're made up of um, earlier this week. And you can go back and watch that video. I'll link it in the comments so you can see it. And then the last thing, or another thing that is very important is how many yards or how many meters are in a ball, this ball of yarn. And that's written right here. 
Um, and then it also gives the weight in ounces and in grams. That's also an important part of your um, yarn uh, label because then you know how many balls of yarn to get for the project that you're making. And then down here is the last part. This tells you how to care for your garment once you have finished making it. And these are the little um, washing instructions. And if you don't know what these symbols mean, you can easily look them up on Google. Just type in on the search bar, um, washing symbols, and you'll come up, there'll be a bunch of images that tell you what each of these things mean. Okay, so that's basically what a yarn label looks like and what the different parts of a yarn label are for. And like I said before, sometimes the yarn label will look a little different. This one has like a little graph, but the information is still the same as far as the stitches and rows. And the standard is four inches by four inches square is what they're going to tell you. And this one has a little bit of information up here too, instead of all together. Now, some labels don't have any information um, that you need, such as this one. It has the washing instructions. It also says what kind of needle you should use, but it doesn't tell me like how big a four by four inch by four inch gauge would be with this needle size, how many stitches, how many rows. And so that's where I would need to use my actual needles. This one calls for 2.5 US needles. I would actually need to use those needles, knit up a, uh, a swatch, and figure out how many stitches are gonna be in that four inch swatch. So I can make my garment the way I want it, the size I want it. Okay, so that's basically it. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you can read those yarn labels easily now and understand what each of those little numbers mean on them. And oh, thank you, Michael. <laughs> I love being a teacher, so this is my passion. Um, if you are wanting to know how to fix your knitting mistakes, please go ahead and click the link in the comments for that, and you can find a, a really nice, sweet guide that has videos and pictures and all that kind of stuff that tells you exactly how to fi fix the three most common knitting mistakes. I hope you have a great weekend, and I'll see you on Monday. Happy knitting!